Hello, and welcome back to your Math Resource Showcase. I'm your host, Amber Soto. I'm the Director of Mathematics for ILEAD Schools, and we've been focusing this week on estimation. There are so many different online resources for estimation. Yesterday, we looked at um, Estimation 180. Today, we're going to look at one called Estimysteries, which I think is pretty cool. Um, it's on a page called Steve w-y-b-o-r-n-e-y dot -E com. Uh, he's a guy that writes a lot of blogs and he has some amazing resources for math and we're going to look at some of these other ones as well. But right now we're talking specifically about estimation. So I wanted to introduce you to Estimysteries. So right here, Estimation Meets Math Mysteries is Estimysteries. So I'm going to click on that. Okay, so here we have here, estimation mysteries, <laughs> estimation meets math mysteries. And we're gonna come down, there's 51 of them that he has downloaded. So we're gonna come down and find day one, estimystery number one, the first mystery. Okay, it opens it up as a PowerPoint. So we're gonna download it here and we're gonna open it up. And then we're gonna go through it. So we're gonna look at view and we're going to do the slideshow, sorry, not view, slideshow from beginning. Okay, so if we just click through this, you'll see we have Estimysteries, Estimation Meets Math Mysteries. This is number one. So this is what the kids are gonna see. This jar filled with these little gummy things, super colorful, aren't they? <laughs> So if you look at that, what would be your estimation? What do you think, uh, how many of those gummy things do you think are inside that jar? And once kids have their response, as the clues appear, use the information to narrow the possibilities to a smaller set. Then use estimation to determine which of the remaining answers is the most reasonable. So kids get their initial estimation and then we give them clues. So here we go, clue number one. The answer is a number less than 50. So you can allow your learners to adjust if, or your kids to adjust. If they had a number that was greater than 50, they can bring it down to try to guess a new number. Clue number two, the answer is an odd number. So again, they can adjust their estimation. Clue number three, the answer is a multiple of three. So for example, three, six, nine, 12, and on and on and on. Clue number four, the answer includes two different digits. And clue number five, neither of the digits is a two or a four. By combining the clues and estimation, you now have enough information to determine the answer. What do you think the answer is? For this particular one, we're gonna click to see it because this was my demo. It is 39 objects. All right, so that was estimation mysteries number one. Let's look at, can I close this? Yes, close that. Now let's look at day two. This is the one I will pose to you. So this is estimystery number two. And you can kind of try to do this with me. If you're not ready for it, get ready to press pause so you don't give yourself the clues before you get a chance to give your initial, your initial estimation, okay? So here is number two. Go ahead and look at that vase. Again, if you're not ready to see the clues, make sure you pause this until you get the chance to give your estimation. How many do you think are inside that vase. How many of those little rocks? So before seeing the clues, estimate how many objects are in the vase. As the clues appear, use the information to narrow the possibilities to a smaller set, then use estimation to determine which of the remaining answers is the most reasonable. Okay, so I hope that you paused and got your answer ready. So let's do the next one, clue number one. The answer is a number less than 100. Clue number two, the answer is an even number. 
And I just realized I should be giving you time in between the clues to adjust your numbers. So if you want to pause in between again to adjust each number, feel free to do so. Uh, if I were in a classroom setting, I might give these clues throughout the day and then give the answer at the end of the day. So kids have to retain the information and kind of guess throughout the day. Clue number three, the answer is not a multiple of 10. And clue number four, the answer does not include any of these digits, two, four, or six. Okay, do you think you have enough information to come up with the answer? I'm gonna leave this one open for you and I'll give the solution tomorrow morning. So go ahead and post in the comments what you think the response is. Obviously, if you have access to this PowerPoint, you'll have the answer, but try not to look before you share what you think it is, okay? Uh, I hope that this generates a lot of math conversation. I hope that you have fun with this, and I hope that this creates some connections where you can really talk about some of that mathematical learning. All right, with that said, have fun, and as usual, happy mathing.